Hello, church. Welcome to worship on this 21st Sunday of Pentecost. I am Pastor Colleen, and I am the pastor here at Grace Lutheran in Shillington. It is a joy to have you gather with us and worship with us today. I would like to uh, remind you to, to note that on November 7th, we are going to celebrate All Saints Sunday. We will be praying for those in our congregation and our lives who have died since All Saints Day last year. So if someone that you love has died in the last year, you are invited to email the church, uh, to the church office and give us their name so that we can include them in the prayers. Also, we will be creating a PowerPoint of all of our loved ones we have uh, lost, not just in the last year, but those who have died that were important to us. And you are invited to email us a picture of that family member and let us know who that person is, give us their name and their relation to you. Um, anyone who has died that's important to you, we would love to have a picture of them to put in our PowerPoint. We're asking for those pictures by the very beginning of November. And you can email the church office if you don't have technology to email a picture and you are able to stop by the church office Monday through Thursday in the morning, we'll make sure we get the picture scanned. But for now, I invite you to prepare a worship space at home, to light a candle, to have some bread and wine or grape juice ready for communion. And then I invite you to sit in your most comfortable chair, to take a deep breath and to know for this time that we are together and that God is most certainly present. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. And now hear the good news. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading for today is from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the fourth verse. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish... He shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. The second reading for today is from the fifth chapter of Hebrews, beginning with the first verse. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many." This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Henry Nouwen, who was a wonderful priest and author, wrote a very wise thing, and he said, the long, painful history of the church is the history of people ever and again tempted to choose power over love, control over the cross, being the leader over being led by God. This has been the church's temptation and the people of Christ have given into it. The Spanish Inquisition, early Calvinism, burning people at the stake, even Luther. Even Luther himself gave in to this temptation when he was asked what to do about the peasant uprising. In order to support his own theological premise of the two kingdoms, he told the governors that they had the right and even the obligation to kill those peasants. And they did. And over 2,000 people were killed in one day. You see, Luther chose control over the cross and power over love. There are endless examples of this in history. And this was James and John's temptation in today's gospel as well. Jesus has just told his disciples that he's going to be arrested, tortured, and killed by the authorities. And still, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come up to Jesus and ask him if Jesus can promise them the corner office and the best parking spaces in heaven. On the outside, it might seem like a small, harmless request. But that's how these temptations work. The devil would love nothing more than if we kept everything we had and earned for ourselves. If we hoarded every bit of power and success and money and surrounded ourselves with it and bragged about it and lorded it over everyone else to get our way. We all know many people who give in to that temptation. But the gospel requires that we let go of things. Last week, the rich man was told to let go of his possessions and to give them away. We are told to give up our grudges and choose forgiveness. And this week, the gospel asks us to give up our place on the ladder of success for the good of others. The greatest temptation for every leader, especially leaders who work for the public good and for the oppressed, is the temptation to only 
work for their own success and comfort. At some point in any great leader's life, the establishment always offers something that's hard to refuse. Just like Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, they are offered a high paying job, the safety for them and their family, the promise of temporary riches. For example, in 1962, at a particularly stressful and hopeless time early in the civil rights movement, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was offered a job as the chief empresario and around the world lecturer for the Saul Hurek Agency, a kind of worldwide talent agency. And he was guaranteed a salary of $100,000, which is still a lot of money even today. After threats to his family, time in jail, and the long road ahead, I'm sure this offer was very tempting to him. It's said he even thought for a long time about it. But he obviously refused the offer and recommitted himself to the movement he was called to. The devil would have loved it if he took that path. Others in the movement probably did take that path. But Jesus says, that's not the way. The way to real greatness is to be a servant to others. The real path to power is to get power and to give it away. Now, some Christians are uncomfortable with the concept of power. We have interpreted Jesus' words to mean that we should never strive to be the best, never achieve, never be better than anyone else, that we should be the world's doormat. But this is not useful for the kingdom. Power is a gift to us. It is an opportunity. Power is a useful thing. We're not asked to shirk it off or refuse it. We're asked to take it and use it for the good of others. For example, when we think of Mother Teresa, we mostly think of her in the streets and the slums working with the poorest people in India. But Mother Teresa was a very powerful woman, too. When she needed more funding for her, for her causes, she would get on a plane, fly first class, assemble a meeting of high-powered CEOs and executives, sit down in a chair, look them in the eye, and say to them, I need your money to do my work. And when they would offer her some money, she would say, no, that's not enough. I'll wait. That's no doormat. That's power. But it's power for the sake of others. As Christians, we don't need to underachieve. We don't need to be doormats. If it's in your heart and personality, rise to the top of your profession. Be the best you can. Be the supervisor, the principal, the district president. But our greatness is found when we use that power to make sure that employees who work for us are being treated respectfully and clients are being treated well. Christians can be elected officials, but their real greatness is found when they use their power for the good of all people, even those people who can't vote for them, like homeless people or people in prison. Christians can make a lot of money, but our real riches are found when we don't just keep all that money for ourselves, but instead we use it to set people free. And as a church, we can be great and big and strong and full of people and have lots of power and influence, but our greatness as a church is only found when we use that power and influence for others. To speak up against injustice, racism, homophobia, violence, war, and all those things that oppress the least among us. Real power is found in giving our power away. The paradox that Jesus gives us here today is to be great means we serve others. 
the way to get more is to give it away. In other words, less is more. The more we give away, the more we have. The more we give away our power, the stronger we grow. The more money we give away, the richer we really are. Perhaps not necessarily monetarily, but in those ways that can't be counted. Less is more. You see, we follow someone who could have had all the power in the world, who could have lived in palaces, who could have lived a pleasant life with riches and comfort and personal inner peace. But instead, Jesus used his power for the good of others. He used his power to heal, to forgive, to set captives like us free from ourselves and the prisons that we make. Jesus could have had anything in the world, but he gave his whole life away for us. God gave God's whole self away, and God gets all the glory. Let's pray. God, help us to be the best we can be by helping us to use what we have in service to you and in service to others. Amen. And now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. Suffering one for all, the, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of ref refuge for all people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful one for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, that all may be healed. We pray especially this day for Sherry Daddario, Fred Ensman, Laura Groger and family, Lynn Hammerschmidt, Marilyn Herzog, Rosemary and Donald Huey, George Hunsicker, Thomas Moore, Nancy Murray, Skip O'Leary, Ann Papada, Janice Reeser, Troy Remp, Claire Steffi, Scott Van Horn, John Weidenhammer, Kristen Widener, and Joan Youngerman. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For our Grace Prayer Family Ministry, we pray for Bob and Betty Harris and Susie and Valerie Hertet, Hartag. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we all are gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. And now, dear church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
all who hunger and thirst come. The table is ready. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>